welcome to episode 165 of A Stitch in Time. Today is Thursday, the 31st of December 2020, which means it is the last day and the last episode of this year. I'm Carol, also known as Knits and Pearls on Ravelry, and I am coming to you from my home in the Fraser Valley of British Columbia, um, a little more than an hour's drive east of Vancouver. If you are a first time viewer, I want to extend a special hello and welcome to you. Thank you for checking out the podcast. And if you are a returning viewer, hello again and welcome back. I, right off the top, just want to express my gratitude for um, all of the interaction with so many of you throughout the month of December. I did Vlogmas from days 1 to 24 and uh, also had one regular episode tucked in there, or maybe two, two I think. And I just so enjoy the back and forth with all of you. I return your many um, happy holiday and happy new year wishes. Um, and I hope you have had a good holiday season despite um, COVID-19 and what that has meant in terms of family gatherings and celebrations. Um, the 2020 Gal Cal uh, finishes tonight at midnight, though I probably will not uh, lock the thread until sometime tomorrow. Um, thank you for everyone who has taken part in the gift along, craft along. And I've just been just so grateful for all of the participation there too and the community that it has um, fostered. So I'm kind of reluctant to see it end. So I thought, let's just start all over again with another craft along. Uh, but this time, instead of making for others, let's make it about making for ourselves. I don't know about you, but I always find after uh, doing a lot of, of gift, mostly knitting, leading up to the holidays, when January comes, I am ready to kind of start working on some things um, for myself instead. So I was trying to think of a name for it because all cows need a name. All I could think of was the it's all about me craft along. Um, I'm not so sure that's the best title. So I'm welcoming suggestions, whether it's the selfish cow or whether it's, um, I don't know, suggestions, please. But hopefully, um, as many of you will be interested in that as you are in the gift along. So I will open up a thread in the Ravelry group and I'm going to run it the same way as I ran the gift along and are the craft gift along craft along you know what i'm talking about um so i'm just basically going to have a chatter thread where you can uh, show us what you're working on engage in conversation and then i will draw winners from that thread and i think this time i will just do it all at the end so i thought i would run this until the end of february um, start it January 1st, run it till, I don't even know if it's a leap year or not this year, but the end of February. And um, I think again, I will offer um, uh, uh, project bags and Ravelry patterns as prizes. The, um, especially the Ravelry, uh, having patterns that are available to purchase on Ravelry, that's a really easy way for me to get a prize to someone. And project bags are pretty easy to ship, but as soon as I start getting into skeins of yarn and such, the postage gets quite um, burdensome. Burdum, burdum, sun. <laughs> it costs a lot. <laughs> so um, because I am donating the prizes myself, I do try and keep um, postage to a minimum. And so, um, yeah, so if you're interested, head on over to the A Stitch in Time podcast on Ravelry. Search for A Stitch in Time podcast under the Groups tab. And yeah, come and show us what you are planning to work on in the early months of 2021. 
And again, any craft is acceptable. Um, many of us are multi craftual so knitting, sewing, uh, crochet, macrame, uh, quilting, um, weaving. I'll be talking more about that in a little while. So any kind of craft you can think of is acceptable. Really the purpose for me of all um, alongs are the um, camaraderie and the sense of community and I just love seeing what people make and I'm a really lazy Ravelry user. I do not have a habit of going into my um, Ravelry friends projects and looking through them necessarily. Um, so it's a way for me to see what all of you are working on because of course if you're tuning in uh, to the uh, podcast you get to see what I'm working on through that. Speaking of, I have a plethora, I love that word, of finished projects to share with you. Um, and also we'll talk a little bit about what's coming up for uh, the new year. So let's start with my first one, which I do not actually have with me. It was gifted on uh, Christmas Day, and that is the um, Barley Light Hat by Tin Can Knit. And there it looks, that's how it looks like on an adult's head. And there's a child's head. I knit it for my um, 10 year old grandson out of some Peyton's Croy Socks FX in the Clover Colors colorway. And I do have a picture of it, not on his head, but just laid out of to when I think it was drying. So here's a picture of um, what it looks like. Uh, while I was making it, I was worried that it was going to be too small, but once it came off the needles, I tried it on my own head and it fit, although a little bit tightly, so I knew it would be okay. And I got him to try it on for me Christmas day and uh, it does fit for sure. Um, I asked him if he would wear it and he said, sometimes so that's good enough for me I wasn't sure if that was something that he'd be interested in or not but it's uh I needed something to round out his Christmas gifts and um I had originally knit a pair of socks for him out of that same colorway they are definitely his colors so um I thought that would be a good idea Another pair of, or a pair of socks that got gifted for Christmas and have since been worn and washed and blocked are these socks that I knit for my husband out of Fiber Nymph Dye Works Mountain Tweed Base and this is the Storm Warning colorway. Um, you have seen these in progress before but I thought you'd like to see them all finished. So this uh, is a 72 stitch top down sock with a uh, traditional heel flap and gusset and a rounded toe knit on a two millimeter needle. They are a little bit looser than the um, socks I usually make them. I think what I'm going to do from now on is drop down to, instead of doing 72 stitches, I think I'm going to do 68 because he complains that they get a little bit loose around his leg. He kind of has some um, skinny legs. <laughs> um, he says they're not bad on the foot. It's just a little, he notices after he's worn them for the day that they get a bit slippy slidey, even though they stay up on his calf. He just feels like they're a bit too loose. So um, I think I'll try that for his next pair. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh, I was really happy with how the yarn washed up, um, kind of evened out and um, bloomed a little bit as I expected it would. Um, so yeah, very nice uh, new pair of socks for him. And I have new socks for me too. In fact, I have two new pairs of socks for me. Um, the first ones I knit throughout um, Advent and I finished them up on December 24th. These uh, are also made from Fiber Nymph Dye Works yarn. This is her 2020 Holiday Mini Pops collection. So I got to open a new mini skein every day from the 1st to the 24th. And I'll show you another project that I was knitting from them, but I used the leftovers 
to make these socks. So these I did from the toe up and all of these are all of these skeins are from the mini collection except I did the heel in some leftovers from my Cirrus socks. This is also Fiber and Dye Works um, Bounce Base, but it's in the denim colorway. The rest are part of her collection. Isn't that fun? I just had just so much fun every day opening them up and I really tried hard to keep up with the socks. I really wanted them to be done uh, by Christmas and so, so they were. Um, I kind of cast them off, I think late no, was it late in the evening or late in the afternoon or maybe early evening? I think I had finished up one before dinner and then I think I worked on them in the afternoon or evening. I can't remember. It's only been a week ago, but it feels like forever. Uh, like the other socks, these are still damp. I uh, washed and blocked up all of my FOs uh, late yesterday afternoon. So they are all on sock blockers, etc. But they're definitely still need to uh, be dried. So anyway, yeah, I was really happy with those. And then once those were done, I needed uh, some plain socks that I could work on during all the many uh, family um, video calls, video chats we did over the holidays. So I picked up my Dorothy socks and um, finished those up. Um, I think I finished these yesterday or the day before. So the yarn is, I always, um, oh I didn't bring in the tag. The yarn is from Fiber Leah and it is the Casu Marvelous collection. The details are on my project page in Ravelry. This is the Dorothy colorway and I don't know if she meant that as a nod to um, Dorothy of the Wizard of Oz and if this is like a neon rainbow that's kind of how I think of it or with these pops of yellow I think of it as the yellow brick road. I'm not sure what the dyer's intention was but that's how I think of them and then I thought it would be fun with such bright um, colors to add pops of color at the heels and toes. So I dug out some um, uh, leftovers, little uh, leftovers from sock yarn leftovers. <laughs> I don't know why that's so hard to say. Uh, the pink is from uh, Zen Yarn Garden. I think it's the sturdy sock in the uh, Cali Berry colorway. And then the yellow was actually part of a party of five uh, mini skein set from Sweet Georgia Yarns. That's the Tough Love Sock Base. I never ended up knitting. I used the other four colors of the collection for something else. And the yellow just, um, just seemed a little out of place in that particular project. So I just wound it up to use as heels and toes. So um, worked perfectly here. I think the colors are just right. And I am looking forward to wearing this bright spot of color on these gray, gray winter days. Uh, once they are dry. <laughs> I am going to take a sip of water. I am a little teed out today. We've been drinking a lot of tea this week, so I thought maybe I should hydrate a little. I knew I was going to have a lot of talking today. Okay, so my uh, fifth, one, two, Three, yeah, fifth and final FO is my advent Adventuresome Cowl. I um, adapted it from the Adventure. <laughs> it's a hard word to say. I adapted it from the Adventuresome Wrap by Amba O'Brien. I followed the um, instructions from, I think it was Little Berry. Uh, let me just confirm that. Ravelry username. Yes, Littleberry on Ravelry. You can also find a link to her project on my project page in Ravelry. Um, and I did everything she did except I finished it off slightly differently. So 
rather than having a open-ended wider wrap I cast on less stitches did a provisional cast on and then joined it um, after I was finished and this is where I joined it here so this um, let's turn it this way and I'll show you all the color progression so this is also uh, damp but I will put it on after just to show you how it all looks like when it's done okay so this was day one so we worked through so as you can see each speckled uh, stripe matches the stripe on either side of it and so we progress through the cowl or shawl or whatever project you're doing and one kind of flows into the next I loved that bright pop of yellow at the end so I will try this on for you oh before I do I'll just tell you the only difference was that on um, Little Berry's project, she had finished this black stripe. Sorry, it's this is where it's joined. Uh, she had finished the speckle, or the last uh, stripe, and done a row of um, black in, in a plain knit row of, of the black, or the contrasting color. And then she kitchenered this part to that but I realized if I did that it was going to be one row too wide and so I just kitchenered from the speckle to my cast on and then you really can't tell that there is even a join there I am so pleased with how that worked out my only error in the whole thing happened right at the beginning when I should have knit the return row to have a purl ridge along this bit here and I didn't realize it till I was somewhere up here and I wasn't going to take it back just for that but that is not noticeable unless you're looking for it um, so I'm really not losing any sleep over it so yeah let me just put it on so you can get a sense of how it looks You can obviously move it around any way you like. Decide which colors you want to show. So I think that is um, super fun. I can see myself uh, wearing this a lot. I have a black, um, like a light hooded jacket that I wear the most out of all my coats. And that will just go with probably just about any top that I'm wearing and go in with the uh, black jacket too. So yeah, super, super pleased. So um, I know I've been in touch, I guess this is inside out here. Let's flip it around. There we go. Um, I have been in touch with Lisa of Fiber Nymph to tell her how much I enjoyed the um, Advent minis, but I know she watches it. So once again, Lisa, thank you for such a fun project or you know, fun little adventure leading up until Christmas, and I'm just so happy with the um, projects that I made from your yarn. Uh, it was lots of fun. So I'm gonna take this off, A, because it's damp, and B, because I think it's gonna get a little bit warm indoors today. All right, I'm just gonna lay this out flat. I think I'm gonna pause here and get my uh, works in progress gathered and uh, just tidy things up a little bit here so I have some room to work because I have FOs everywhere which is actually a really wonderful situation to be in so I'll be right back so since Christmas um besides finishing up my adventuresome cowl and my Dorothy socks I've been working on a couple of shawls uh, one of them is this Longest Night Shawl by Lori Law. Uh, as the name suggests, it is inspired by the winter solstice and it is knit from uh, this 
5050 merino silk lace weight yarn from Wooly Wonka Fibers, and it is the Solstice colorway. I cast this on on the winter solstice back in 2017, and it's a project that I don't care how many years it takes me to complete. I like to pull it out during the holiday season each year and work on it at least a little bit. Uh, this year I've actually got quite a bit done in the last few days. So I'm in the second, I'm on the second chart, which is a 32 row repeat. And I have one more repeat plus several rows left to do in that before I switch to a new chart. So I'm quite anxious to do that. It's hard to see on this picture, but it has different um, kind of, I think, snow inspired um stitch patterns. So here's what I have done. It's a triangular shawl. Like most lace, it doesn't look like a whole lot when it's on the needles. But I think you can get an idea of how, how it's coming along and get a good look at that stitch pattern in this first section. So I think what I'm going to do is try and, before I tuck it away for the year, and maybe I won't, maybe it'll sit out for a while, but I sort of doubt that. I can feel myself itching to get to some other projects already. But I think what I'm going to try and do before I do put it away is uh, finish up this one repeat of 32 and then finish up the last repeat of 32 so that when I pull it out again, I'm going to be moving on to a new chart and it'll feel like a new project again. So um, I'm already up to 300 and something stitches and I have a, quite a ways to go. It is a very large shawl. So uh, definitely enjoying that. It has been living in this project bag that I made for myself. Um, but I uh, put this next to some new yarn I have and I'm going to Put that project in this bag because it matches perfectly. I'll show you that shortly. And then I was keeping my adventuresome cowl in this bag and this is getting large enough. I'm going to transfer it now to this bag now that it's done. Um, I also meant to say that the black yarn I used in my adventuresome cowl was um, some Shibui sock that I'd had for ages and ages. Um, it is color, I know I wrote it down, color six, which is ink. So that shawl. And then once I finished my Dorothy socks, I needed uh, something simple to work on, but I wanted to not cast on a new pair of socks until tomorrow. And so I picked my um, Albuquerque Sunset back up and that is a shawl by Casapinka. It is um, an asymmetrical triangular shawl and I am knitting it up more or less in the same colors as the original but different yarns. So I am using uh, for the gray <laughs> my pore skein pulled it out of the bag and it's absolutely destroyed. So I'm going to have to wind this up from the outside into a ball because I've been pulling from the inside. This is a Sweet Georgia Yarns Tough Love Sock in the Snowfall colorway. And I'm pairing that up with uh, Miss Babs uh, Tart in the Deep Sea Jellyfish colorway, which is the same colorway that was used for the original sample, just in a different yarn base. So it's more or less going to look the same, but that's what drew me to it. When I realized I had basically the same combination in stash, I just went for it. So here's what I have done so far. And I have just completed this section. And I've added in a couple of plain rows of the deep sea jellyfish. And now I think what happens is that this gets reversed so that the background color will be the uh, deep sea jellyfish and the 
contrasting slipped stitches will be in the snowfall colorway. So I'm kind of anxious to get to that next step. It's always fun when you have projects that have different steps along the way because it motivates you to get to the next step. So um, yeah, that's what I've been working on. I am, well first up and coming project that I'll share with you as part of the um, holiday mini collection, you had a choice of getting a full skein of yarn to open at the end, which I opted for. And so I was, I've kept it till Christmas day and I was just so excited to unwrap it because this is just so me. I wanted to cast it on right away, but I decided to wait until tomorrow for the new year because the colorway is inspired by um, this little bird and um, the idea of hope. So there's a quote here from Emily Dickinson. Hope is a thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tunes without the words and never stops at all. And so this was, um, well, I'm going to read this because I, I really liked, I liked it. She said, as I considered the design for the exclusive colorway to go with this year's collection, this Emily Dickinson quote kept popping up in my mind. Approaching the beginning of the new year, it seems to me that we can all use a dose of hope. I agree, <laughs> especially this year. Using this quote as my jumping off point, I explored numerous possibilities for more specific colorway inspiration until I finally found this little guy. He immediately exuded a feeling of brightness and cheer, and I, I, imaged his, I imagined his tune would do the same. I knew I'd found my colorway inspiration and the Feathers and Tunes colorway was born. I hope it will help remind you of the brightness, warmth, and hope awaiting us in the days to come. So I thought it would be very appropriate to wait until New Year's Day to cast this on as my first project of the year. And I'm so excited to do that. And then uh, while it was sitting here next to this bag, I thought, well, is, not, is that not the perfect um, project bag to put this in? So that is what I'm going to do. I think I will wind it up uh, tonight or today, later today, and have it all ready to start. Um, either after midnight tonight, if we, well, yeah, we usually stay up that late anyway, or more likely first thing in the morning. So um, gorgeous, gorgeous colorway, Lisa. I am just, just totally enamored by it and so appreciate the sentiment that went into uh, dyeing it. That's what I love about hand-dyed yarns, just the inspiration, right? Uh, let me see, what else have I got here on my show notes? They're over here, so forgive me for looking. Oh yes, I have a new section. Weaving! Yay! <laughs> so I think maybe a month or so ago, it popped into my head that what I wanted for Christmas this year was a loom. I had done a little bit of weaving back in grade 11 um, as part of an applied textiles course that I took. And I know we started out with doing uh, tapestry weaving which I wasn't that thrilled with, but then um, we had these little four shaft table looms that we had access to. And I, I did um, a couple of projects on, on uh, one of those. And then um, because I left school and didn't have a loom of my own, I never got back into it. Although interestingly enough, a couple of years later, my sister's boyfriend I don't even know how he acquired it. He acquired basically a, a four heddle loom that was on a floor stand and he gave it to me, but I did know how to access um, what I needed to work with it, the shuttles and, and such. And it sat and sat and sat and moved with us to several places until I finally uh, gave it away because I didn't think I'd ever get back into weaving. Um, 
And then recently I've seen on several different podcasts, um, weaving projects. And most recently was watching an episode of Sweet Georgia, um, her Taking Back Friday podcast from Sweet Georgia Yarns. Felicia Lowe hosts it. And she was showing some scarves that she had done from, I can't remember if it was from sock blanks or if it was from just a variegated yarn. Anyway, I thought, wow, those are so beautiful. And I thought I could do those. I'm sure I could. And so I started looking into looms. Uh, my mom always gives us uh, money for a Christmas gift. And usually we put it towards something that we can use together. Um, this year I um, took my half, <laughs> put it towards a loom. And so then I also ordered a loom stand, uh, which was my my Christmas gift from Cameron this year. Um, and also ordered some accessories. So anyway, I got a 24-inch Ashford Rigid Heddle Loom. And then I ordered several different um, heddles with different reed sizes to go with it. So I can switch out the reeds and do different types of uh, yarns because your, your heddle, I'm gonna go grab one. For those of you who don't weave, it'll be a lot more, uh, a lot easier for me to explain it to you. So here are a couple of extra heddles slash reeds that I have for my new loom. Uh, so it's like in knitting where you, you would use different size needles for different weights of yarn to achieve different gauges. The same is true for weaving. So this is a 10 dent reed, which means there are 10 spaces per inch. This is a five dent. So obviously you would use this one for a finer yarn, this one for a heavier yarn. And then I never even thought about it before, but you can thread two strands of a finer yarn through a larger heddle to make a, a thicker warp doing it that way. Um, obviously you could do the same with knitting. A lot of people will use two strands of fingering to sort of achieve a worsted weight, but it hadn't really occurred to me before. So anyway, I um, got the uh, stand a, I think the week before Christmas week. And then I wasn't sure if I was going to get my loom in time for Christmas or not because I had originally ordered it from Yarn Canada and then I got a note to say that it um, had, was back ordered and it was not going to uh, come as quickly as they thought and so they refunded my money and put me on the list to be notified when they got them back in stock. So as that turned out, that happened much more quickly than I was expecting and in the meantime I'd been trying to source it from somewhere else without success. Uh, so when they were back in stock, I went ahead and placed an order. And then for days, it just sat there as waiting ship, awaiting shipment, awaiting shipment. And then um, it arrived, I guess I got a shipping notice the day it arrived. I can't remember exactly. Anyway, it, it just showed up. <laughs> I think it was on the 20th third maybe so anyway I was ecstatic uh, because I was really itching to put it to use this week after Christmas but then I ran into another problem and that is that when you get the loom and the stand and these pieces you're supposed to finish the wood yourself with like a wax so I had ordered the Ashford wax from the place where I had ordered some extra accessories for it only that didn't show up before Christmas and so I learned of a different product I could use and store just down the road carries it but they were closed Boxing Day so I had to wait till the day after Boxing Day to go and get that product um, and I think it was the next day um, my other things arrived so as soon as I was able to put my loom together, I 
uh, warped it up with what was going to be a scarf, the um, Ashford uh, book that came, or the, yeah, the little booklet that came with the loom had a project showing you how to warp the loom and, and weave. And so it was basically using a worsted weight yarn. They showed it in stripes. Um, they got you to warp the loom and then weave all with one color down, down the whole length of the scarf. And I was gonna say cast it off, but that's not quite the right thing. So I so I warped it up in um, these colors. I just had, these were leftovers I had in my worsted weight, non, sorry, worsted weight feltable yarns. These are combination of, <sighs> I know there's some Cascade 220, there's some, um, uh, what's it called, um, Peyton's Classic Wool, this is a Valley Yarns wool, and then this was um, Naturally. So I just pulled these out and, and, you know, warped it up, started weaving with this natural color yarn because I had the most of it. I didn't have enough of the other colors to actually do the whole length of the scarf. So you could see my very early passes with the shuttle. My edges definitely leave something to be desired. But I actually feel like I kind of got the hang of it pretty quickly. I think those edges aren't too bad. A little loose here. Um, and apparently you always have one side that's not as good as the other. And I've figured out that is my right side. I'm much better at keeping tension on my left side. Anyway, so I wove that much and then I got bored <laughs> and I didn't really like the way it looked and I thought I am never going to wear a scarf that looks like this. So let's just start playing. So I uh, wound up some other colors on the shuttles and or a shuttle and then just started playing with different number of uh, strands in the different stripes. And then I accidentally uh, wove in two rows uh, without changing the way the heddles lie. So I got two in a row and I thought that looked kind of cool. So I kind of played with that here. But then I learned, was it there? Oh yeah, I learned there that I had to make sure to catch in the edge thing if I was gonna do that. So I end up with a strand there. Somewhere along here. Oh, then, then I switched to like um, the burgundy color. And then somewhere along here, one of the strands of the blue in the warp became, uh, I think one of the st two strands or one of the strands in the yarn broke and then this ended up somehow like not being woven in. So anyway, and then I just was ready to get to the end of this warp. <laughs> I'd had enough playing, so I just wound the used up the rest of this burgundy, wound up some of the silvery gray, and then just finished it out. So um, then I took it off and I uh, soaked it uh, like you would knitting and um, rolled it up in a towel and laid it out to dry and then gave it a bit of a press. So I think all in all for a first project. This didn't turn out too bad. There's definitely mistakes and there's, you know, some bad edges, but it was um, good just to get the hang of what I was doing. And then I was anxious to uh, put a new project on it. So I actually filmed a little segment about that and I am going to pop that in here. So there's my pride and joy, my new toy. Uh, so let me take you over and show you my second project in progress. So this time I am making a real scarf, not a scarf turned sample. And I've warped the loom with two different types of yarn. The main color is this uh, Yauza What is Skein from Miss Babs in the Berlin colorway. And you can see it is quite colorful. And then I have some stripes running vertically 
in this um, Mineville Wool Project Merino in the Cranberry colorway. My original plan was to do a window pane plaid in which I would have uh, stripes of red running vertically separated by a skein of the variegated and then I would do the same uh, running uh, for the weft. But when I started weaving it really did not show up very well and in the end I decided to just to do the weft all in the uh, misbab. So that's what I have here. So it's just a very simple uh, plain weave scarf but I love how it's weaving up it really does look like a plaid just because the colors keep crossing themselves so I'm having quite a bit of fun weaving this up even just from uh, just having done one project before I was much happier with my warp I uh, felt like it had um, wound up really well with even tension and despite this being a little bit wonky here I'm quite pleased with my edges and feel like I'm weaving rather straight so I guess the truth will tell once I get it off the loom and lay it out but I am really happy with how things are going uh, for the second project. So as you can see I have been having a ton of fun with my new loom and I am really excited about getting on to the next project and the next project. I'm especially eager to try out some of my fingering weight hand painted or hand dyed skeins uh, because I have a lot of those and there are some that um, I have tried to knit with and haven't found the right project for and so perhaps weaving will be a more appropriate way to use them now. In fact, the um, Berlin colorway of the Yauza that I'm weaving with now, I had originally knit a uh, Wauza Way It's Shawl by Susan B. Anderson. And when it was done, I just felt like a clown in it. Uh, I just didn't care for it at all. Felt too bright and gaudy and I ended up just taking it out, rewashing the yarn and putting it away, waiting for the right project. And I just love how it looks all woven up. It's the same colors and yet in woven form, they look completely different than they did in the knitted form. So um, yeah, I'm anxious to sort of experiment with some yarns I already have in my stash and see how they might look woven rather than knitted. Um, so yeah, that is it for all of the uh, fiber related content. Let's just move on to a recap of what's been going on around here for the last couple of weeks. So I think the last time that I recorded, I had, I think that day, spoken with my doctor. I'd had a, um, some sort of mild respiratory virus uh, just before that and it had exasperated the symptoms that I've been experiencing, um, asthma-like symptoms. And so she had upped my dose of medication and then I had an appointment with her the following week to see how it worked. In the meantime, the next day I had an appointment set up with an allergist um, that I'd had set up for, for a number of weeks. And so what he ended up doing is actually taking me off my old meds and prescribing a new and different type of inhaler. And that seems to be working quite well. Um, I had a follow up with my doctor a week later and she said that was actually the medication she was going to try if the one I was on wasn't doing the trick. So it's kind of nice to see they are on the same page. Um, unfortunately, because of COVID-19, everything's backed up. So I do have several tests that I'm supposed to have done. Um, breathing tests, uh, some blood work, and then allergy tests. But um, the first of those is not scheduled till uh, a few weeks from now. I'm still waiting on the time for the breathing test. That has to be done in a hospital uh, because the um, allergist isn't allowed to do it in his office at this time. 
and then I meet with him at the end of March. So it's still going to be a while to to get all those tests done and get a true diagnosis on what's going on. Um, it appears that I do have asthma. What's causing it? Not sure why it all sprang up at once. Not sure either. Um, and uh, I guess the allergist will probably make that final diagnosis once he uh, meets with me and has results of tests. I'm not sure. In the meantime, it's being well controlled and that's the important part. Um, let's see. Yeah, so uh, Christmas has come and gone since I spoke to you last. Uh, we have had a very good holiday season despite everything. We knew going into it um, a few weeks ago that we were not going to be able to celebrate in our traditional noisy family uh, style. And so um, we just just knew that's the way it was and, and uh, just set things up to enjoy ourselves despite the restrictions. And so over the course of a few days, we had um, video uh, get togethers with various members of our families. Um, Christmas Eve, we um, did it with our two sons and our uh, daughter-in-law to be so they opened their gifts from us and vice versa had a nice visit uh, the next morning we did the same with our daughter's family and then that afternoon my mom and all my sisters and brothers-in-law all got together uh, for a couple hours of a visit and then two days later we did the same thing with Cameron's uh, family his two brothers and their wives and so while it wasn't quite the same, we did get to spend time together and see people's expressions as they open presents and things like that. Um, I was going to see, there was something I was going to mention. Oh, on Christmas Day, I cooked a turkey, um, the same as I did on Thanksgiving, and portioned out uh, turkey and some of the fixings for dinner um, for our two sons uh, so that they um, would have Christmas dinner. Uh, our youngest son, uh, he took that over to a friend's home. Up until just about a month ago or so, his best friend and his uh, girlfriend uh, were actually living with him since I think early on, well, yeah, it was early on in the year. And so they were, they kept each other in their bubbles. So um, he had dinner with them and then our son and his fiance had dinner on their own. And then we had dinner on our own. But we decided a long time ago that even if we weren't going anywhere, we were going to get dressed up for Christmas. So put something nice on, put some makeup on, and we had a really nice dinner. Um, it's probably the best turkey I've ever cooked. Uh, we did it in um, an electric turkey roaster like I normally do. I didn't do that at Thanksgiving because my sister had it. We have one that's been, it's kind of a funny story. We bought it for our parents, all of us girls, at their request one year because my dad used to host uh, some people from his old soccer team up at the cabin every year for a fishing trip. And he would always cook a turkey in the old um, oil stove that we used to use at the cabin. So my aunt had one of these electric roasters and he thought that was pretty, pretty cool. So asked for one. Well then, when it came around to cooking it, he was wary about trying something new. So he just kept on doing the turkey in the oil stove. And then this roaster got began to get passed around to whoever was holding Christmas that year would use it to do the turkey. And then in between, we'd kind of trade it back and forth if we were doing a turkey for Thanksgiving or, or whatever. Um, so at Thanksgiving, my younger sister had it. So I got it from her, I think Christmas Eve. We did our turkey and then we decided we're just gonna buy one for ourselves. I actually ordered it this morning. 
because they are handy to have on hand and they do such a nice job with the turkey. It was so moist um, and just, just perfectly done. So we had cooked the turkey so it was ready sort of late afternoon and my husband went and delivered um, the portions out to, uh, to our kids and then uh, we ate later. So I had, I wrapped up just enough for dinner in some foil and reheated it. And when I opened up the foil, it was just juices all in the foil. It was just so good. So we had turkey dinner, I think three times in the past week. I uh, made a soup and I shared the stock with our um, son and his fiance. And then we had uh, turkey sandwiches a number of times too. So we definitely uh, got lots of meals out of that turkey and it was good every single time. So while I was talking to you, I could see that Cameron's car had driven up. So I got up and closed the door because I feel very self-conscious recording when he's home. Um, I had hoped to finish it up before he got home from running some errands, but he beat me to it. Uh, but then it appears that he has gone out again. So I am going to try and finish this up as quickly as I can uh, before he gets home yet again. I'm not sure why it bothers me so much. It certainly doesn't bother him, but I feel very self-conscious talking to all of you, uh, knowing that he can hear my voice. Um, can't explain, it's just the way it is. In any case, uh, so we were visiting with his uh, two brothers and their wives the other day, and his younger brother was telling us some really exciting news. So um, our sister-in-law's uh, daughter and her boyfriend and granddaughter are in their bubble and have been all along. So they spent Christmas together and um, they had bought um, like scratch lottery tickets as stocking stuffers. And so our um, sister-in-law's daughter had, had won some money on hers and had cashed them in on more tickets, including one for our um, big provincial lottery. And that's the kind where you need to match so many numbers to win various prizes. You need six numbers to win the big prize. Um, anyway, long story short is she won half a million dollars on the latest draw. Can you imagine what that would be like? I mean, it's life changing. Half a million dollars. I think uh, everybody's probably still a little bit in shock and processing it. But it's just such exciting news and it's so cool to know that somebody who's actually won big money in a lotto because usually, the mo I think the most I've ever heard is maybe, I don't know, 50 or $100, $500,000. So they had been talking all along about buying a house together, one with a suite where um, my sister-in-law's daughter uh, can live and then they would have the other floor and eventually that's the um, her only daughter her only child so eventually would pass to her um, so now this just means they can do it sooner than they had planned and yeah it's very exciting so their 2021 is looking rather bright at the moment um, yesterday was both our future daughter-in-laws and our younger granddaughter's birthdays. I think it's really cool they have them on the same day. Yesterday, or yesterday last year, we all celebrated together, but this year, um, of course, we had to do separate celebrations. So our son and his fiance went out for dinner last night, sent pictures of their dinners. They went to a new restaurant that we weren't even aware of. Um, apparently a seafood restaurant so that's great because uh, Cameron loves seafood I I enjoy it but he loves it um, and boy their dinner sure looked nice our son had a big steak on his plate and our daughter-in-law had a big crab so sounds like they had a nice celebration and then uh, of course our granddaughter she turned six and 
with COVID-19. Of course, she couldn't have a birthday party in the traditional sense, but I was really happy to see our daughter and son-in-law went to great lengths to make a party out of it, had um, Paw Patrol, you know, plates and tablecloth, and um, they had a, my daughter bought her a balloon that turned out to be almost as big as she was. Uh, she didn't realize how big it was in the package. And then when it was, they were blowing it up, it's like a big, you know, a helium uh, uh, foil balloon. It was this huge unicorn. Um, so we did what we did with our grandson's birthday is we bought ourselves some cake and then uh, had a video visit with them. And when they were doing their cake, we put a candle on ours and got our granddaughter to pretend to blow it out over the video. And then we all had birthday cake at the same time. So the way we could be together without being together. And other than that, we have not been doing a whole lot. Uh, Cameron has been on holidays since Christmas Eve. And we have just been enjoying relaxing hanging out at home. Um, he's been doing a lot of reading. I've been knitting and weaving. Um, quite often in the evening, we'll sit down and watch some TV together. Uh, just uh, taking advantage of the winter coziness. Uh, we did go for a long walk one day, but since then the weather's kind of changed. It's all gray and rainy. So it's nice to be inside. Uh, of course, today is New Year's Eve, and we will be spending our evening uh, pretty much the way we've spent the rest of the holidays, which is um, at home by ourselves, <laughs> as I'm sure many of you are doing too. Um, our provincial health officer has mandated that all liquor sales must uh, cease in bars and restaurants by 8 o'clock this evening um, in an effort to um, limit any large social gatherings, either in restaurants or out on the streets. And so let's hope that that has its desired effect. Um, our provincial numbers have sort of um, uh, leveled out. Uh, this week, most days have been under 500 new cases per day and one day was even under 400 cases. And um, that sort of leads me to my something good, which is a sense of optimism for 2021. Uh, with our lower case numbers, I'm really hopeful that they will continue to decline. Really hope that people did the right thing over the holidays. And it's also very encouraging to know that we now have two vaccines in circulation. Um, and yes, I am optimistic that by this time next year, while things may not be entirely back to normal, um, perhaps we'll be able to gather again uh, to celebrate the hol holiday season uh, in person with each other. Uh, our daughter was just saying that um, since she works in the healthcare sector as a pharmacy assistant, uh, that she will soon be eligible for her vaccine. So that's exciting uh, news indeed. Um, our uh, son and daughter-in-law gave us a very interesting and unique Christmas ornament to commemorate uh, the year. Uh, it's definitely in line with his sense of humor. Um, if you're offended by profanity, you might want to look away or cover your ears or uh, skip ahead a few minutes. But um, at first glance, this looks like a beautiful pinwheel or snowflake. But if you look very closely, you will see it says 2020 in the middle. And then all these little beautiful spirals all say fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> So fuck 2020. <laughs> so that's been hanging on our Christmas tree. Um, but that does sum it up for many of us, doesn't it? Although I have to say I am an eternal optimist and I really do try and focus on the positive. And even though 2020 has been a terrible year for 
many reasons. Um, there's also been a lot of uh, good things and good times along the way. So I do choose to focus on that. Normally, towards the end of the year, I like to reflect on what knitting I've done in that year and look ahead to the new year and what projects I might like to accomplish. And um, this year I've been taking part in the 20 and 20 challenge, which was hosted by Lisa of Fiber Nymph Dye Works. And I did put out three special episodes um, recapping my quarterly progress in that challenge. And so I am planning to put out a special episode next week recapping my uh, fourth quarter of the 20 and 20 challenge and then also discussing what projects might be in store for 2021. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, keep your eye out. I'll uh, wait till next week to record it once Cameron goes back to work and once life kind of settles back into normal again. And then I do plan to resume my normal, mostly weekly podcasting schedule. So um, yeah, look for probably maybe even a couple of episodes next week. So once again, uh, Cameron beat me home. Um, I've just heard him come in and uh, so that's a good time to sign off anyway. So I will see you next week. In the meantime, thank you not only for watching this episode, but thank you for uh, your um, dedicated viewing all year, your uh, wonderful support and encouraging comments and your friendship above all. So I wish each and every one of you all the very, very, very best for 2021. I just have to believe there are better days ahead. So um, take care, stay well, and happy knitting until I see you again.